What is the ultimate solution to injustice? I want to share that with you in this video. Huh? What is that? If I didn't know any better, I'd say those are blueberries. Hmm. I love blueberries. Hmm. I could eat those every day of the week. Blueberries are the best. <sighs> I like me some blueberries. <laughs> Hmm? Oh. Get away from my blueberries. P please, sir, could I have some? I haven't eaten in days. And look how skinny I am. No, these are my blueberries. Yeah, but, 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 but sharing is caring. Uh-uh, scaring is caring. <laughs> my blueberries. Injustice. The future for a Jewish person wasn't just that one day you're going to die and go to heaven, but Jewish people believed that there was going to be this glorious time in the future and it would be on the earth, a beautiful time, and it would be when the Messiah was physically ruling on the earth and they called this time the Messianic era or the age to come or the world to come. And they believed that this would be a time where the Messiah would rule the earth physically from Jerusalem and he would bring this perfect justice to the earth. And what's really interesting, I think a lot of times when we hear about the Jewish hope, we kind of make fun of the Jewish people like, ah, oh, but that's not what Jesus was about. He wasn't about bringing real justice in a real kingdom, something like that, right? But when you actually look at what God's promised in the Old Testament, you realize that actually is what he promised. A really good example of this is Psalm 72. And it describes this glorious time, this coming kingdom, this messianic era or the age to come. And look what it says. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. So this description of the earth actually like just flourishing and bringing peace to people. And it says he will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and he will break in pieces the oppressor. So it's talking about the Messiah and it says that he will actually bring justice to the poor, he will save the needy, and he'll break the oppressors, he'll break them in pieces. That sounds like perfect justice, right? Destroying the oppressors, rescuing those who are suffering. And that is promised in the Old Testament about the Messiah. And so when, when you hear in the New Testament, you talk about the Christ, the Messiah, this is something that for a Jewish person would come to mind, that there would be a time in the future where he would bring justice. Another really familiar passage is Isaiah 9, where it says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. So it, it starts by saying there's going to be a government and there's going to be peace and it's never going to end. And he's going to reign on David's throne, this Jewish throne and over his kingdom. So a Jewish throne, a Jewish kingdom, and he's going to uphold it with justice forever. Isn't that amazing? It's not just that he would rule on the earth for, for just a thousand years or something. He's going to rule forever, bringing justice. And then another really amazing one is Isaiah 11, speaking of the son of David, which we know who the son of David is, right? It says, he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He won't judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. So you see this picture of it being on earth. He will decide for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and he's gonna slay the wicked. So a picture of perfect justice. And let me ask you a question. Did Jesus do that when he came and died on the cross? 
thing is pretty clear, he didn't bring perfect justice to the earth. We didn't see that happen. So when we see these kind of promises, we see, wow, there's more. We should get excited. There's more that God is going to do. The gospel is so much bigger than Jesus just dying on the cross so one day we could go to heaven. It's not like the cross was the end of the story. There's more that the Messiah is going to do when he comes again. And I really love Isaiah 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one. So clear talking about the Messiah. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will, guys. He will bring justice. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. Do you see how intense that is? He's not going to falter or be discouraged. He's not going to stop till he establishes justice on the earth. That is amazing hope, guys. There will be a time in the future where the Messiah will rule the earth and bring perfect justice to the earth. So when is this all going to happen, right? When will that start? And one thing we see in all through scriptures, but especially in the prophets and the Psalms, is this concept of there being a day, the day of the Lord. And it would be the day where God would fulfill these promises, the day when God would come. And so I want to say to you guys that that also continues into the New Testament. The Old Testament talks about this amazing day, kind of like a spotlight, right? A spotlight shines on something and highlights it. Well, the scriptures really highlight this day in the future called the day of the Lord. And in the New Testament, the apostles, they just assumed that it was talking about the second coming of Jesus because we see the return of Jesus being this hope. The return of Jesus is the day where he will establish this kind of justice on the earth. Look what 2 Thessalonians says, God is just. We know that God is a God of justice. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. So there's this picture of justice. He will repay trouble to those who trouble people. He's gonna relieve those who are suffering. And he says, next, this will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. So when is the moment that God will bring justice? When is the moment where God will establish justice in the earth and when the Messiah will do all of this? It says this will happen when he's revealed from heaven in fire and with powerful angels. The solution to injustice is the Lord Jesus coming with fire and angels. Isn't that awesome? Luke 18 also talks about the coming of the Son of Man and that being the answer to injustice. It says, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Guys, when the Son of Man comes is when he will bring the quick answer to injustice. He will bring justice to his elect who cry out for justice. So when we see that the world is not right, when we see that there's injustice, we should take courage, take hope knowing a day is coming, a day is at hand, a day of justice. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and makes war. Guys, it's not okay that people are suffering. It's not okay that there's injustice. It's not okay. The world is not okay. But do you know what? We have promises from God. The world won't be this way forever. A glorious time really is coming in the future, where the Messiah will come, sit on his throne in Jerusalem, and rule over the world, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will rule over it from that time and forever. A real day of justice is coming. It's gonna be awesome. Let this give you hope and give you courage that even when we experience injustice, we can wait. We can entrust ourselves to God because he will come back. And he will stand up for us. He will bring true justice. Guys, a day is coming. I can't believe he wouldn't share his blueberries with me, right? You have been naughty. Mm. Ow. Ouch, that'll hurt.